Hi. Hey, Hi guys, doing? how's it all going? Yeah, good, good. It, but it's half term, isn't it? I mean, I obviously I know that because yeah. I've got grandchildren and Sherry too. Um, so yeah. Isn't it confusing though, Sherry, about what's open and what you know what what activities to do? I mean, it's crazy. What about where you are? Is is there anything happening? Well, actually, um, there's a place called Farmer Ted's, which is all animals, and it's an enormous farm that we can go to. There's a place called Ninja, which is trampolining. Which, we go. Uh, we go. With them. We're coming. <laughs> yes, sorry. It's, it's all it's I can so say. For you. Yeah, please, stop that. I'd knock it, myself it, out. But, so there's lots of places, but what has really angered me more than anything is that the government has allowed the gyms to be open, but not the soft play areas. No, play areas are really important to young children and disabled children. And the, the, the confusion is, is they aren't, don't seem to be open. And then everybody's saying, well, maybe they're open in certain areas. I mean, how much more confusing can this bloody government put as it? I mean, yeah. I, on it, it makes me well, boil what, what this government has done because we don't know. We don't know. It's so it's, it's so very tough. Yeah. And also, it's like, you know, uh, some of them are open, some of them aren't. And as you say, yeah. and you know, if you're a grandparent, you're supposed to, you know, probably in the vulnerable age group. Well, some are. Us, us obviously not. But, you know, so what I said to Sid, my daughter, is that I've got, as you know, I've got three grandchildren. We're going to do stuff online. So I've been looking up online. There's a fantastic website called fantasticforfamilies.com. And one of the activities is you can actually improvise and do your own play, which is brilliant. Wow. And you can choose the characters, the costumes, write the scripts, send in pictures. And it's all, um, I think it's the Oxford Playhouse who started it, but it, everyone in the country can do it. I mean, it's not oh, we do that one... on a daily basis, pretty much. Yeah, don't we? <laughs> that's exactly, darling, exactly. And that's just one thing they offer. And if you don't like, I mean, most kids love, you know, improvising and doing plays. But if you don't want to do that, you can do music, art, all sorts of stuff. So, so yeah. that's another option. But it is yeah. crazy. It is. We just don't I know what is going on. The desperate thing is, though, everybody is just so wants to be with other people. Yeah. You know, I know we can't hug and things like that, but I know um, my granddaughter sees the children that she's in the bubble with at school. Yes. And they go out now and they, I take them for tea and you know, I take them for lunch. I do everything I can. And then mm -hmm. and wherever else they want to go, because my grandma, my granddaughter always says, you're the best grandma in the world because you never say no. Oh. <laughs> Well, you're you brilliant. Want to do that. <laughs> but you're that's, a great but that's but that is the, that's the Not advantage great. about being a grandma. Because my grandma used to, people used to say to my grandma, "You spoil her." And my grandma used to say, "If I can't spoil her, what else is there to do? If you can't spoil your grandchildren, who, of course, that's what we do." Yes. We I'm not quite there yet. I'm only a dogma, but I'm hoping for <laughs> grandchildren as soon as possible. But um, can I now bring in, please? our wonderful Dr. Tracy Mountford, who's talking about all sorts of things that are gonna help us inside and out. Hi. Tracy, darling, Hello. I just said you're going to help us inside and out. So what's happening? <laughs> so yes, I thought last week we were talking a lot about working from the, out, uh, the inside out and nutrients and well-being and health. But I thought we'd go back to basics and think about what we can do for our skin from the outside in. And I thought about this because of all this discussion about face masks and what we're all doing, with our fabric face masks and our disposable face masks. And a lot of people are commenting on how their skin is getting really spotty and pore clogged and grotty and all kinds of things. And I just wondered how many of you are wearing fabric face masks and how often you're changing them? Because I think a lot of us are actually not doing what we should do, and that can impact on our skin health as well. So I'm the first one to admit, I wear disposable masks, and therefore I do change them quite a lot, but that's not quite so, you know, it's not so healthy environment. And fabric face masks are, how often are you changing yours? Is anyone prepared to share? Well, they say, don't they, that you should change them twice a day at least, you know? Yeah. And that you if you've got the blue ones, you throw them away. 
if you've got the fabric ones, you should wash them every single day. You yeah. Should never put them on again. Yeah, but I think most do. And um, as I said, I think a lot of people put them in their pocket, put them in a handbag, you know, yeah. it, just because we're busy and we're not thinking about it. And I think that. Sorry? Yeah, I think, yeah. It's I've been very guilty. Work. Yeah, I mean, the, what, what they did was a study on what we should be washing them on as well. So whether we should be washing face masks on biological washing powder mm. or non-bio. And what non got rid of the most bacteria? Does anybody want to guess which is the most effective one? The non-bio. Non yeah. Biological. Non-bio. Non -bio. I have two masks, which I have on a rotor, the, uh, the BDA Wonderbirds mask we have and another one and I do I would do it every day I change them around yeah it's really good I mean yeah. and also we were talking yeah. about, also there's the makeup that we put on the inside of the mask yeah which I come um, up with big smudged mm. lips like a like a clown yeah I, I agree <laughs> I heard yesterday there was a, a company um in Ireland and apparently they're doing linen face masks and they said that will stop that will help the, uh, the breakouts. Yeah, I think that we get pork clogged as well. So that's why I think a lot of people are getting very spotty, zitty, change of temperature now. We've gone from summer to winter and we're going into central environment. So a lot of people have literally got this area of either redness or zittiness so what, so what or feeling very do, poor. Tracy, how do we need to look after our skin? What should we do? Well, I think, first of all, I, I do believe in going back to basics. I think, you know, I spend my whole life about going into clinics and getting lots of you know active stuff and I don't think the majority of people want all that necessarily so I think the first thing is more just very basic cleansers because I think we can be too aggressive if we get zitty we start to put all this stuff yeah. on our skin that we think is going to help so I think a very basic cleanser cleansers can't be underestimated we've all got our favorites haven't we but really cleansing our face well I'm a great favor and again I'm um, a great fan of basic things like say I mean, I know that's um, not particularly, you know, all singing, all dancing, glamorously packaged. But if you've got sort of irritated skin, something very, very basic that you can get from a pharmacy that is really, really good. And that will stop us getting very zitty. But if we're getting very, very poor cloth, and I've seen a lot of people that are, that's mm. because the, the top layer of our skin composed of something the epidermis is composed of something called the stratum corneum and i won't get too technical mm -hmm. but the stratum corneum is the is the dead bit the dead bit at the on the surface of their skin and that in a young baby and very young people sheds off all the time it's shedding all the time so our skin doesn't get zitty or clogged great but when we get older our cell turnover Lower, but also if we're sticking you know things over our faces we're not mm -hmm. getting that natural exfoliation yeah. mm -hmm. so a very nice gentle chemical exfoliant there's loads of them out there in the market I'm not going to push one over another actually will just keep those cells sloughing off naturally and online you can buy really good ones I'm a, I'm a fan of something like Germarini by a glycolic face cleanser I use that on my daughter who gets teenage spots Mm. And that's really good because it just gets rid of that top dead cell layer and stops it getting poor. Yeah. The thing is, Tracy, I think a lot of people don't know how to wash their face, which might sound a bit weird, but I think they don't. I think, you know, people need to realise, I was told this many years ago, and I know it's true, is that, A, you know, people, after they've washed their face, they, they just towel dry, again, with, a, yeah. with another thing that they've used. So it's about passing your face dry, isn't it? All of those things. Yes, it is. And some people are much more susceptible. I mean, some people can get away with anything. You know, I know people that all their life have been washed in soap and water, towel dried, nothing much else. Genetically, as we keep going on, they're blessed, great skin, <laughs> love them. But I think most of us aren't like mm. that. And when we go, it, you know, it's amazing to see even young people with really poor clogged skin now because of this. So it's true. You've just got to be a bit careful. Yeah. And not, I'm not a fan either of very aggressive um, mechanical exfoliants, you know, the sort of um, mm. scrubs mm. And, and things that really sort of irritate and abrade the surface of the skin. I'm not saying they're never useful. I'm saying that generally that can be more irritant to the skin. So with chemical exfoliants are you, are you on the better. Have a abrasion, Tracy? Or is that a, something? Yeah. I, 
medical dermabrasion or dermabrasion, dermabrasion techniques are used very effectively for skin quality sometimes. But I think that sometimes at home, if we use a, a, in a sort of controlled environment, I think they're great. They can be very useful. Tracy, can I ask you, I have dry lips um, here and, um, and elsewhere probably, but we'll let that go. Um, oh, for but goodness I, I, sake. <laughs> Whatevs, hashtag truth for all of us. Anyway, moving on. What, what I want to ask, Tracy Darling, is my bottom lip gets very dry and peels and I put Vaseline on it, I do everything. Is it just maturity? Why do my lips get dry? And it's not just the mask. It happens all the time. It goes through phases. And I don't know why. And it's really irritating. It might be age. No, I don't think it is just age. Okay. Actually, we play me with old age, don't we? I mean, that may play a part a bit. Weirdly, if you overhydrate the lips too much, not that you are, but if people who use lip balm all the time or lots of glossy lipstick. No, I, I use can... matte lipstick mostly, but it, okay. it maybe that. that's paid to what I was going to say. But sometimes yeah. people are really obsessed Vaseline in their lips. Actually, it weirdly can make the skin drier deep within. It'll sort of right. plaster oh. down and make the lips look nice, but actually... Yeah underneath at the dermis it, you're, you're getting less hydration so i changes in temperature but again you said it goes through a cyclical thing and Just that's a, very, yeah. very i don't common. know why it's, it's very so boring it's something it could be you know you can go back to things like you know have you got enough zinc in your system have you got enough vitamin c in your system all of that stuff because zinc is a big one but the other thing is actually probably it's just environmental changes in environment Mm. You know, drink more. I don't know whether really drinking any more water works at all. I'm not. I'm not convinced it does at all. But I think it may be that because we use a lot of lipstick, things are more drying than others, and we don't realise it. And buy the best brands available and have them on your lips, which I'm sure you do, Harriet. And still, the cheapest, we, the cheapest darling. <laughs> it's all I use. Primark. I use this all the time. And yeah. I've used it for years and years. That's all I use, and I put everything over the top of it. But my lips are my lips are always hydrated. So I just like an advert, really, doesn't it? But uh, Olivia, three pounds, I think, Harriet. Have you yeah. seen this? Yeah, I've, I've, yes. I've got one. I, absolutely. But if you want to brilliant. do a red lip like today, you and it, it, I, I love the stuff you've you've uh, mentioned, uh, Debbie. It's great, and I've used it because you suggested it years ago. Um, but sometimes it, it doesn't seem to be because of anything. That's my frustration. No. no. And, um, and Never there's, a, there's a line I had in Ad Fab, which was moist is my word du jour. And I can only say that it's not today. <laughs> <laughs> but not moist today, Harriet. But you, you touch on a really good point because, you know, when we're using all these wonderful, and this is, a, I'm slightly left to field now because this is specifically for lips. But when we're actually using all these wonderful moisturizers, the lovely sort of hyaluronic acid, you know, super de duper things, they will work because they will again going back to the stratum corneum they will literally stick all that uneven top dead cell layer down make our skin look lovely glowing dewy when our makeup goes on it's fantastic and there's nothing wrong with that because that's all what we want you know if i put it under my eyes i look sort of 10 years younger but actually it artificially sends a signal to the deeper layers of your skin the active layer saying i'm well hydrated skin i don't need any more moisture and you actually make your skin dry up over time which is really oh. weird but you do. so that's why sometimes we can go the other way overly hydrate and use moisturizers too much and then you run into a big circle where you get superficially dry skin as a consequence and that's why you go back to the baby and you look at babies ones that don't suffer with you know eczema crisis and that's sort of if you look at baby skin we don't have to moisturize their facial skin. They have perfect cell turnover. They've got those lovely little gorgeous skin. And that's what we try and do when we use products nowadays. We're trying to stimulate the deep layer, not overly hydrate the top layer. Well, yes. thank, you, thank you, darling. Thank you so much. So we will, next week, we will have even more perfect skin. Um, we will. We'll be hydrating and uh, our lips and doing our faces under our masks. Thank you, Gracie. Bye. 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 Oh, that's really interesting. Thank you, Tracy. That was brilliant. At least we know now all that we need to know. And now we do have another guest uh, moving on to a lady called Gemma Garrett, who will tell us about the wonderful product and the wonderful life that she has had in order to uh, facilitate these products. Gemma, are you there? Hello. Welcome oh, to the next. Hi, Gemma. Hi, Gemma. Ooh. 
Oh, good afternoon, lovely candles. I, it looks like you're in some sort of weird sort of, I don't know. Seance. Seance. Yes. <laughs> I think it looks very glamorous, darling. I'm very... getting rid of all the negative energy with this pandemic. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> good. good. We need. <laughs> no, this is my office. Wow. Is it? Yeah. Fabulous, really? darling. Thank you. I mean, I think, I think the Wonderbird should start kind of through the keyhole because we do see everybody's houses, don't we, girls? <laughs> <laughs> we certainly do. Yeah, we see everything. Our own. So, so Gemma, first of all, um, tell everybody, I mean, you became Miss United Kingdom and how on earth did you transition from a beauty queen to a businesswoman? How did that happen? It was a very, very long time ago, Debbie. But um, in 2008, I was Miss Great Britain. And um, I've always been passionate about the welfare of animals and not testing on animals. I then went on in my career to become a makeup artist and I found it really hard to find products to use on my clients that were completely cruelty free. And um, that's kind of how Briella came, came together. That's, that's amazing. amazing. What, I was so, fascinated to hear that you were actually a beauty queen because I, you know, all these movies you see um, about the catwalk and, um, and the comp competition between all the contestants. Is that really true, Gemma? Uh, yes, I have to be honest. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, it's very competitive. Uh, I come from Northern Ireland where we are very close knit um, community. And then when I moved to London, I, you know, I did find it's very different, especially going into Miss Great Britain. Um, that was in 2008. I mean, it's, I'm a completely different person now, I would say. Well, it was, yes. I mean, the 2008 to me seems like it was last week. That's what's so terrifying. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but this beautiful, can't tell us about uh, Buella and how, it, how that started, though. So, yes, I think that we live in an Instagram world now where your opinion can be let's just be honest your opinion can be bought for a couple of hundred pounds and I have a bit of a following on Instagram and I wanted to be authentic and true to my following so a lot of people were saying are you being paid to say this is a great product or you know th these were the messages I was getting every day and I just thought mm. I want to have a platform where my followers and um, anyone else knows that it's cruelty free and I really do stand by it. So it kind of started as a bit of a hobby and now it's a business, which is fantastic. Wow. Fantastic. Wow. With, with, with you say you love animals, what animals have you got? I uh, had two British Bulldogs up until last year. I lost Buddy last September and I still have Stella and that's where the name came from. So it's um, the start of Buddy and the end of Stella. How oh, beautiful, oh. that's so divine. And the sense of animal cruelty, has that been with you since you were young, that sense of d doing the right thing, not having animals abused to serve us as humans? Uh, I think I, I grew up very working class. Um, I, I would, I'm a vegetarian now, but I grew up very working class where you, you just ate what was on the plate. I mean, if I had said to my mom, um you know i'm not going to eat meat you know you would have got <laughs> so um yeah it's just um as i've got older i've just been more aware and then when i became a makeup artist i realized there is no there's no excuse for testing a new eyeliner on a rabbit there's just no excuse for no. It. there isn't Adam. Absolutely right. No, it's, one, it's so moving and wonderful to hear that journey and that sense of realisation. But as we take mm -hmm. things for granted, oh, I'll just go and get an eyeliner, I'll just go and get... And the fact that mm -hmm. it has gone through a process which has harmed and abused an animal, half mm -hmm. the time we don't think, but to have you mm -hmm. say this and to have products that don't is just really wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. No, and can I say happen. that the products are fabulous. In fact, on one of the shows I said, smells like ecstasy. And everyone went, <laughs> you can't say that. I know, well, thank you so much for saying that. <laughs> so, so Gemma, do you do you go do you find all this? How do you source these fantastic products? And tell us, that's one of your amazing candles, which incidentally Sherry and I don't have, do we, Sherry? Oh, I love candle. I, I mean, I love all your stuff, but the, um, 
mad about candles and it's beautiful. Girls, I honestly, I have Molly here in the office and she's packing up as we speak. Oh, she's all getting uh, all the new Thank stuff, you. especially. Uh, this is our new moisturizer. It's called oh. Hydrofirm. It firms the body. It is excellent. Thank you. So <laughs> will it work on the stomach, darling? It does. It will. Thank you. <laughs> And, and, a sagging, and a sagging buttock. I just yeah. need to know. Yeah, fine. Gemma, your, your, your honey as well is amazing. Yes, where is, is my honey? I have it here. Yeah. Um, yes. So the honey isn't actually mine. So we also sell other people's products that I have used and tested. And, and I, I think it's good enough to be on Briella. So the honey comes, is Manuka honey. It comes from New Zealand. I absolutely love it. I... I put my whole health down to it. I take a spoonful every single morning, and really, I swear wow. by it. Right. And um, what is this? Is it plus a hundred? What is it plus the new curve? We, we go right up to a thousand, so it wow. is an expensive wow. product. It's um, brilliant. Can you can you explain what that actually means? I've never I see it in supermarkets, and I see it getting mm. more and more expensive. And I think, what? Why? It's <laughs> just um, it's just the quantity um of the um, medicinal pr properties that are in it. So it's like a CDB oil, you know, there's different strengths really, like a coffee right. yeah. or... And yeah, but I agree with you. And so, so yeah, the products are amazing. Sherry and I absolutely loved the fake sand. I mean, we were just talking about it before and Sherry said it was so long ago that we tried it. Yeah. No, and I, I'm um, to do it my daughter because she wanted it. <laughs> <laughs> the fake tan is fantastic and the reason I got behind the girls because that isn't my fake tan that's a third party they're local to Northern Ireland as well their name's Lucy it's all organic and, ah. I mean you know I think now because of the pandemic we are starting to support local um, yeah. which is fantastic and um, I like to do that as well under the umbrella of Briella it's also such a women empowering thing that you're doing and it's supporting local women and it's all, it's, it's amazing. It's so fantastic. Yeah, it yeah. really is. Thank well, you. Listen, the details of your website are on, are on the blurb of the show. So anybody can, and they have to look because there's too many products for us to talk about. Oh, but just, we could go on forever and ever, but they are everything that we've, with the candles and the beautiful fake tan and so many other things and there's t-shirts and there's just <laughs> everything. So yes. thank you, thank you so much for joining thank us. You, Gemma. Honestly, it's been a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for taking the time. And um, yes, please keep safe. <laughs> and you, and you, and you. <laughs> Lovely to see Bye, you. Darling. Bye. 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 Ooh, oh, fantastic. Products are really so lovely. Really beautiful products, uh, yeah. Fabulous. Yeah, lovely. Really, I mean, the thing really is, what amazes me about people like like Gemma is that you know here we're talking about these products and we're going how much we love them, but to, to go from the phase of where you love something and then to create a business, mm. exactly, amazing. It's like oh. you know, the next step, isn't it? Again, it really have, is. again, as women, to have the freedom to do that, like we've said before, when we were young, you couldn't. It wasn't legal for women to buy a house on their own in the sixties. Wasn't 60s. it? No. Oh no, it had to be signed no. by a man. Oh, oh, no. by a man. So it's you again, to have the ability. Sorry, sorry, Sherry. You couldn't have your own mortgage. Men owned everything. Really? I mean, the, no. No, my my mum had a my mum had a mortgage on a on a place in the sixties. Definitely. It was, well, it just shows you that you know she was uh, beyond her time, but certainly um, you know, that's why women uh, you know, never left home. You know, they didn't split up with their partners mostly because they would have been left with nothing because they owned nothing. And that's yeah. why to have your own business, to be able today, yeah. birth control, education, a voice, and to open your own business with your own desires is the most moving thing. And we're so, so lucky. And the yeah. generation below us, although they're having a terrible time mm -hmm. at the moment, at yeah. least they have a voice. I mean, we exactly. come from, I come from a a mother that was exactly, you know, like you're saying, Debbie, she was determined, she bought her own houses, she bought her own business, and and she was just and so I have her steel right through me. So that's yes. what she can survive. And exactly now in these terrible pandemic times, I have it right through me. And I hope I've I know I've passed it on to Keely and all the other girls. And I just think but but we're lucky that wasn't the norm then. The norm yeah. was 
I think we all had mums, didn't we, who did that? My grandfather owned. She yeah. Didn't do anything at all, ever. Mm -hmm. Do you know, it's good. that's exactly right, because my grandfather was a boxer, as you know, and told my mother and me, you know, doesn't matter, that, I mean, this sounds quite sexist now, it doesn't matter if you're a woman, you can do anything that a man can do, which is a brilliant legacy, isn't it? It's a brilliant yeah, thing to be told. <laughs> we were very lucky. Yeah. yeah, I never doubted for a minute that I wouldn't provide for my children, regardless of whether I ever met anybody, that I wouldn't be able to do that because my mother and father, I mean, they were always together, but my mother yeah. had um, earned differently to my dad. And, mm -hmm. but I never doubted I wouldn't do that. It, I knew I would, it was never a question in my mind, but you realize when you're young, you don't realize that has been fought for. And just mm -hmm. to hear Gemma now deciding yeah. to start a business is just you think, fantastic to know exactly. we can. We yeah. have the right to do that. that yeah. Yeah. And my, actually, when my so when my grandpa, my, my sorry, not my grandpa, my my my, my grandmother's father died, uh, my grandmother helped him run his business. And when he left, she had four brothers, and she was the person that helped him run his business. And when she when he died in 1950, he had to leave the business to the brothers. He wasn't allowed to leave there anything you go. to her. That's and it. and what go. happened was. They bankrupted the business within 10 years and my there grandma had run it with my grand with, with her father. And if she'd have left it to her, which is what he wanted to do, that would never have happened. Yeah. And it also, just shows you, doesn't it? Yeah, it's like my mom with her. I'll tell you a little story. When I was in Belly Dorm, yeah, I I learned all about how Belly Dorm started. And I was told by local that Belly Dorm, the place, was owned by a family. And they had two, three villas on the beach, which are still there. And that's all there was, nothing else. Now, when the family died, they left the beach side, which was nothing, it was stone, it was nothing there, to the girls. And they left the mountains where surrounding Benny Dawn to the boys. The girls made millions yeah. and the boys <laughs> made nothing. And the wow. girls still had the mountains. But the girls, because no one thought at the time that anybody would, you know, the beach was awful, you know, it was stones, it was pebbles. So they they knocked down everything, they put a beach down, they imported the beach, the sand from the Sahara, which they still to this day, and up went all those buildings. Wow. Isn't, isn't that wow. amazing? That's real karma, isn't it? That, that is, is that's the girls, that's the girl. Well, what great show, it's been such an interesting, as usual, so really? interesting. So now I'm gonna go and buy a whole lot more masks because Harriet, I lost my Wonder Bird somewhere. I'm so no, yeah. Okay, leave it with, leave it with. I'd like I, another one, please. I am so, I'm so upset. Let me tell you what's happening on Friday. Ooh. We have to all practice our curtsies because we have Dame Christopher Biggins coming to join the nest. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Leading Thank up to so Halloween. Exciting. And we also have Dame Talia Jensen. Yay! A couple of years ago, she took a hundred sacks, both of my daughters, into London on a great big London bus and gave them out to all the, the uh, people that were there that were homeless. And it's all full of different foods and different clothes. And it was an amazing, uh, amazing thing to do. And she's going to do it again this year. So she's Yay. been raising money. So she's going to come and tell you all about it. So Talia is about to go into London on a London bus. I don't know how she's going to do it in the pandemic, but she will inform us. Yay! Fantastic. <laughs> See Brilliant. You Brilliant. Bye. Bye. See you, see you on Friday. Bye. Bye. Bye.